What's going on guys? Today we're going to learn how to create this awesome text message bubble effect here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and if you're new to this channel and you love photography and photo editing, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more weekly tutorials just like this one. Now today we're obviously going to be talking about creating this really awesome text bubble effect in Photoshop and I have a really awesome pack that you guys can download to make this entire process a whole lot faster. So of course the first things that you're going to need is having an image with somebody on their phone to reference where these text bubbles are coming from. Once you have done that, you're pretty much ready to go. Now commonly you would have to go through and cut out your own bubbles and make sure you have the right text and everything like that. But I've created a new pack for you guys so you can skip all of that process and you can just download this bubble pack from bewillcreative.com where you can get a ton of text bubbles all in different sizes and colors that all you have to do is drag and drop the bubbles into your images, type out the text that you want and you're done. It's really as easy as that. Now again, if you're wanting to access this text bubble pack, it's available at bewillcreative.com. But for everybody watching and using this tutorial today, I'm going to be offering $2 off for all of you guys helping me out and supporting this channel. Now, if you're wanting to access that discount code and the link to this tutorial pack, I'll leave all that info down in the description below. Now, again, you don't have to purchase this tutorial pack. If you want to go through the work of cutting out the text bubbles and everything, that's totally up to you. I'm just offering this up to make everything a lot easier for you. Once you've downloaded the bubble pack, it will look something like this and you'll have a whole bunch of different options from gray bubbles, gradient blue, and so on. And in this case, I already know exactly what bubbles I want and that's in the solid blue bubbles here and I'm going to just turn off the, these other ones. And for this image, I just want my bubble one. It's the perfect size for the text that I'm thinking. And then I'm also going to want my iMessage bar and my red receipt. So what I'm going to do is just hold command or control, click on my bubble one go down into my dates and red texts and click my iMessage bar by holding command or control and then also going down to my red receipt. So I now have these three layers selected and I'm just going to grab my move tool and click and drag these three layers up into the desired image. Now since these are all smart objects we don't have to worry about scaling these and them losing quality so I'm just going to scale these up a whole bunch until it kind of fits better within my image. Something like this works great for me right now. So the first thing that I want to do is edit the text of my bubble. So to edit the text of my bubble all I have to do is double click on the layer and it will open a new window for me where I can edit the text. All I have to do is grab my text tool by pressing T, click on my text like so. I'm just going to highlight to delete just like any old Word document. So I want this to be a little bit of a sassy, funny, cheeky message. So I'm going to type in one of my text bubbles now. So now I've typed in my text. I'm happy with how this is looking. I'm going to commit to that and then I'm going to press command or control S to save that document. And now when I go back over to my other layer, it's going to show up in that text bubble. Now, since I'm happy with this text bubble, I'm going to duplicate it and create a gray bubble of the exact same size. And now with my original bubble one layer selected, I'm going to rasterize that layer. So then I don't make any changes with my copy. So I'm going to right click on bubble one. I'm going to go here to rasterize layer. So it is now no longer a smart object. Now with my bubble one copy, I'm going to quickly call this to gray bubble. I'm going to double click on that layer once again and I'm going to change this bubble to gray. So here's the really awesome thing about this pack is all of these bubbles are completely interchangeable just with a couple clicks. So since I now want this to be gray, I'm just going to click my gray bubble, turn off my blue bubble layer. I'm going to change the text color to black by just clicking color overlay right here and now I'm good to go. Now I'm going to edit this text once again and I'm going to highlight it, press delete and type in the desired text that I want in this other text message bubble. Now I've typed in what I want, I'm happy with everything, so I'm going to commit to that. And once again, I want these changes to be saved in my other document. So I'm going to press Command or Control S to save that. And now going back over to my original document, and I have my two desired texts exactly how I want them. So since they're both the exact same size currently, I'm just going to position them how I want. So generally in something like that, about the same distance that they would show up on an actual screen of your phone. And I'm going to shift click both of these layers so I can select them both. I want them to be like kind of centered over her head. And then maybe I'll just bump over the gray one a little and bump over the blue one a little as well. Something like that. 
Now the next thing is I want to add my little red receipt below this text bubble. So I'm just going to grab my red receipt, grab my move tool, and I'm just going to move it into position here and then rescale it to fit a little better for the size of our text bubbles. And now with our red receipt, we have a similar thing going on. We can change the time and everything really easily just by double clicking on our red receipt smart object here. It'll open up a new window for us and I want it to be in the morning. So I'm going to click AM. I'm going to turn off PM. So now that change is made here. And at my time, I'm just going to click on that, grab my text tool, click on my time, and I'm just going to change it to some random time in the morning. Let's go 10, 17 a.m. I'm going to commit to that, and with those changes made, I'm going to press Command or Control S to save that. Going back here, you'll notice the changes to red, 10, 17 a.m., and everything is looking really awesome to me. So now at this point, everything is starting to really come together, but of course, it doesn't really look that cool yet. Let's add a couple extra awesome effects to make these bubbles look as if they're glowing and some cool blurs to really tie together the entire photo. So the first thing I'll do is just group these two bubbles by shift-clicking both of them and pressing Command or Control G. And I'm going to call this two bubbles. And then with my text message bar and my red receipt, I'm going to shift click both of those, press command or control G, and I'm going to call these two texts. Now the first thing that we'll do is create this cool glow on the blue bubble. So I'm going to create a new layer above my bubbles, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush tool and sample this color blue. Now with this sampled color blue, I'm just going to create a large brush, and we're basically going to create a sun glow which I've talked about in other tutorials, but this time we're going to be doing it with the similar colors that are already here in our text messages. So on this new layer, I'm going to click once with that sampled blue, and then I'm going to go in my color picker and go to a more white color like this. I'm going to scale my brush down a bit and click once again inside. So now we have this little blue orb on its own layer. I'm going to call this to blue glow, and I'm going to change its blending mode from normal down here to linear dodge add. And then I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm just going to position and rescale this just to fit over top of our bubble perfectly. So I'm just stretching it out, making it a little thinner by holding alter option and shift with my move tool selected so that I can really position that glow exactly where I want it. Now this glow is looking a little bit intense. So let's bring down the fill a little. So we're going down to our fill slider and I'm going to drag that back until it has a nice glow to it, but it's not too overwhelming on our text. Something like that looks really good to me. And now it looks as if it's glowing, but it doesn't quite look blue enough for me. So I'm going to create one more layer above my blue glow. I'm going to call this to blue overlay. And I'm going to, once again, sample somewhere in my bubble here, make that color a little darker. And I'm just going to paint over top of my bubble like so. And I'm going to change this blending mode from normal down here to overlay. And then that still looks a little bit intense, so let's change the fill just back a little bit like this. And now suddenly we have this really awesome looking glow onto our text bubble. Now since I don't want this to affect my red receipt, I'm going to just grab my text group and drag it above my glows here. So now my red receipt will not be affected by this glow. Now we've successfully created a cool glow on our blue bubble. Now let's do the same thing for our gray bubble. So I'm going to create a new layer. Once again, I'm going to call this to gray glow. This one is a lot easier because we don't have to deal with any color necessarily. I'm just going to go and select a nice sort of, not quite white, but just a little bit into the grayish blue here. And I'm going to once again grab my brush tool and just click once to create one little light orb here. I'm going to grab my move tool and rescale this orb to fit over top of my gray text bubble like so. And I'm going to change its blending mode from normal down here to linear dodge add and change its fill back a bit. I, go, I like to go to 0% and then work my way up. Something like that looks really good to me. And now we have a cool glow also added onto our gray bubble. So I'm going to shift click all of these glows, press Command or Control G, and I'm going to call this group to Bubble Glow. And turning that on and off, you can see the really awesome difference that that has made for our effect. Now the next thing to make this whole image pop is to add a little bit of this glow showing up on our hair so it looks as if that these bubbles are actually here in our image. So what we'll do is going down to our base image, I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to sample once again this blue color here in our text bubble. Now with that blue color selected on our new layer, I'm just going to go and paint onto parts of our hair that are directly underneath this bubble. So something like this is perfect. 
You don't have to be super exact because we can touch this up later. So this looks fine to me here. I'm gonna call this one to blue hair glow and change its layer blending mode from normal down here to overlay. Now if this is looking a little too intense for you, you can go and bring the slider, the fill slider down just a few points like this. And now we're getting this nice glow here, but I don't like how it's affecting part of her head here at the front. So I'm gonna add a layer mask to this hair glow layer. Make sure black is selected, painting at 100% opacity with a soft brush. I'm just going to mask out some of that area here. Then I'm going to go to about 50% opacity brush and just mask it a little bit more just to make that transition nice and smooth. Now I also might just go ahead and add a little bit more blue just on the outside edges of her hair here. And then reduce the opacity with a 50% opacity brush to get rid of some of the strength of that blue up in the front there. So now that is looking really nice to me there, and I'm gonna create one more layer, and I'm gonna make this one nearly white, something like this looks great to me. I'm gonna call this to highlight hair. And with my brush tool selected at 100% opacity, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a something around the edge of her hair here as sort of a highlight. And then I'm gonna change its blending mode once again from normal down here to overlay, and then I'll change the fill slider down to 0% and then bring it up slowly until I find something that I'm happy with. So that looks pretty good to me right there. Zooming out, now we have this cool little glow that looks as if it's coming off of our text bubble. Now I'm going to select both of these glow layers, I'm going to press Command or Control G and I'm just going to call this to hair glow. Since we have so many layers going on, we want to make sure that we don't get confused, so just by grouping everything makes our lives a whole lot easier. So now we have successfully added in our text messages, added this cool glow and a lighting effect to our subject, and now we're ready to tie everything together with some cool blur effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is add sort of a radial blur around the entire image, and then we'll add a little bit of a blur to this iMessage bar for some cool perspective. So going down here to my main image, I'm going to convert this layer to a smart object just by right clicking and going here to convert to smart object. This way I can go back and change any of the blurs that we apply later on if need be. Once your layer is converted to a smart object, you'll have this little icon right here. And then we'll go up here to filter, down here to blur gallery, and here to iris blur. Once you've selected iris blur, you'll have this little circle thing that shows up. And essentially what you're looking at, anything from this solid line outwards is going to be 100% affected by your blur. Anything from this solid line into these dots is going to gradually feather out to no blur at all. And you can adjust the blur right over here in your iris blur blur slider. So I'm going to rescale this blur so it's pretty large and it's only 100% affected on the outside corners. And then I'm going to bring in my feather like so and then maybe bring this up so I'm just getting a little bit more blur down here on the table and so on. So that looks pretty cool to me there and now you can go ahead and change the blur to whatever you want. You can go crazy if that's what you're into. In this case I kind of want to keep it a little bit more low-key so maybe something in this range here about 19 pixels looks pretty cool to me. Maybe just drag this out a little bit more. And then once you're happy with your blur, go ahead and click OK. Now your blur will load into your image and you can go and change any of those blur settings just by double clicking here on Blur Gallery and go back and change any of those blurs if need be. Next, I wanna add a Gaussian blur. Go into my iMessage text bar. Since it's already a smart object, I'm gonna go up here to Filter, down here to Blur, and Gaussian Blur. With that Gaussian blur selected, I'm gonna find a nice pixel radius that I like. I don't wanna to go too overboard, otherwise it's totally unrecognizable. I just wanna have a sort of cool little depth and perspective added in here. So I'm gonna go about, let's say about 10 pixels, looks really good to me, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And now with just those two blurs, we've really tied together and added this sort of cool perspective to our overall photo. Now once again, if you're wanting to get your hands on this iMessage bubble pack that I used in this tutorial, Go ahead over to BeWillCreative.com where you can find this pack and also be sure to use the discount code down in the description below for $2 off that is only available to viewers of this video. 
All proceeds from the iMessage text bubble pack go towards funding and supporting new tutorials and photography articles on this YouTube channel and my blog, BeWillCreative.com. So with that, I'd just like to thank everybody for the endless support here on this channel. I'd love to see how your images turned out using this effect. So when you upload to Instagram, make sure to tag me at BurnWills so I can send a little bit of love your way and I'll be sharing some of my favorite posts on my Instagram story. With that, that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.